Hello friends, how are you guys? So today I am going to discuss about the LTE, OLTE Mobility KPI Optimization. In this video, I will discuss about what is mobility or handover, what are the type of mobility and handover, and what are the reason for handover failures, and what are the major solution for it. So first we have to understand what is the mobility. It is the key procedure for ensuring that users can move freely within the network. Means a user can move from one location to another location without dropping the call or the session. So in LTE, OLTE mobility handover, this is generally two type. One is LTE handover intrafrequency and interfrequency and another one is the IRAT handover that also called inter radio system technology handover. So intrafrequency handover means handover between the same frequency. Suppose this is the source site and this is the target site. Both frequency is X then handover called the intrafrequency handover. If this side belongs to the X frequency and this side belongs to the Y frequency and if handover become between them then it is called the interfrequency handover. And for the I rate handover if this side belongs to the LTE and target side belongs to the 2G or UMTS then when we changing the technology from LTE to 2G or 3G this is comes under the IRAT handover. So LTE handover or inter, intrafrequency handover are generally two type or you can say are two they have two version. One is the X2 based version and another one is S1 based. So X2 based when two E node B are connected via the X2 interface that is called the X2 based handover. It happened when both E node B source and target connected in the same MME pool like with the same MME. S1 based handover when source and target E node B are served in different MME pool. Means one E node B belongs to this MME pool and another E node B belongs to this MME pool or this MME. So if handover become between this E node B to this E node B then S1 interface come in the picture that is the region it called the S1 based handover. So either it will be the interfrequency handover or the intrafrequency handover. Both case come under the X2 or the S1 interface. And if handover become between the same site like from one sector to another sector then it is called the intra E node B handover. Here S1 or X2 handover is not required. Means S1 interface, S1 interface and X2 interface not come in the picture for the same site handover between the sectors. So intra or interfrequency both are based on S1 or X2. It comes under the Preparation phase or the execution phase fails. So preparation phase means when source E node B request to target E node B to accommodate the UV. Means please be prepared to accommodate this UV. This thing happen under the preparation phase. From the call flow you can see here in the preparation phase admission control and resource allocation has been done and in the execution phase deattach from old cell and synchronize to the new cell. So once it deattach from source cell and attach to the new cell that comes under the execution phase. So preparation phase is categorized below parts like admission control, tag issue, x2 link unable or not defined, late handover or early handover or ping pong handover, s1 interface failure or one way neighbors. And execution phase failures are categorized in downlink coverage, interference, 
PCI collision cell range issue. So let us understand one by one what is this admission control and what are the coverage and all. First category belongs to the admission control. So admission control means target site are congested. So it is not ready to accommodate the new UV. In this case, we have to balance the traffic between the LTE carrier or offload it with the neighbor site. Tag issue. For the tag issue, if tag is wrong, then we have to correct the tag as per the planning database. Next one is the X2 link unable or not defined. If there is X2 link uh, failures, then we have to delete the neighbor relation and ANR will automatically add it. Next one is the late handover or early handover. So late handover or early handover, we have to find it from the report and we have to change the cell individual offset value accordingly. If handover failures come under the late HO, then we have to modify CIO in positive side. And if it is an early handover failures, then we have to modify CIO value in negative sides. Also, we can modify the RET value to optimize this late handover or early handover. Next one is the ping pong handover. Ping pong handover means for a particular location, if multiple cells are coming and uh, all cells having equal signal, then there may be the chance ping pong handover occurs and sometimes it causes the mobility problem. So we have to retune the A2 or A3 event value and we can retune the down tilt or we can retune the parameter cell power reduction. Next one is the S1 interface failure or one way neighbors. So if problem is due to this, we have to optimize the missing neighbor relation. We can add it. If neighbor are one way, then we can define it in both way. Now execution phase. Execution phase first part is the downlink coverage. So downlink coverage issue means there is the poor coverage or coverage related problem. So to improve the coverage, we have to modify the reference signal power or we have to up tilt the source or the target set. We can return some timer and offset as well to improve the downlink coverage. So once we improve the downlink coverage, handover success rate will improve automatically. Next one is the interference. So for the interference cases, firstly we have to identify uh, it is due to the internal interference or the external interference. Internal interference means uh, there are the high users so we can reduce the load for particular cell. And if it is the external interference then we have to switch off the external device like jammer or some other devices which are not exist in the network or not defined in the network. Now PCI collision. For the PCI collision if any of the LTE sites that having the same uh, PCI then PCI collision will come and due to this handover failure come in picture. So we have to replan the PCI for such cases. Next one is the cell range issue. So incorrect cell range setting between source and target, it will impact a specific neighbor, not all neighbor relation. So check that neighbor, that particular neighbor and correct accordingly like we have to modify rest cyclic shift and pH index for that cell. Now this part is completed. Let me repeat it again. Like LT handover inter interfrequency is based on either S1 or X2 handover and they have two phases, execution phase and the preparation phase. Now come up in the i right handover or you can say the inter radio system technology means from different technology to different technology handover like from 4G to from 3G or from 4G to 2G like that. So here we have to check the SRVCC setting. If it is not enabled, then we have to enable the SRVCC. And second is the PSC collision. In UMTS, if there are multiple sites or more than two sites or two sites having the same PSC, then we have to return that PSC for the successful handover. Same way for the BCCH in the 2G, we have to modify the BCCH a particular cell if there is the collision of BCCH. Congestion. If 2G or 3G site is congested, then we have to balance the traffic within the same technology with the neighbor site. Missing target neighbor. If neighbor site is not defined with the source site or we can say source LT site, then we have to 
had that never it either from the gsm or the wcdm next one is the b2 event setting so as we know that i write handover is uh, based on the b2 event so we have to tune some parameter b2 threshold to utra ICNO, rsrp offset and hydrosis accordingly as per our requirement also we can change the redirection setting like priority trigger threshold and uh, rsrp ICNO, eruption etc for the umts and the gsm so in this video you understand the mobility kpi optimization theory and some basic parameter name as well in the part 2 i will bring up uh, some nokia parameters and some erection parameters as well which are related to the mobility kpi optimizations i will tell you what are the default value against each parameter and what are the range to modify or to retune the parameters so this way you can understand very well uh, to complete mobility and uh, you can implement in your network to improve the handover success rate thank you very much thanks for watching keep subscribe my channel to find upcoming video thanks